Hey guys! Okay, uh, let's see what day we're on. Hmm, I think it's day 12. I don't want to mess it up. We are on day 12. How are you guys feeling? We are officially on like the second half of the study together. Today, it is a wonderful topic. If, have you already cheated? Have you already, have you already looked ahead? That's alright, I don't mind people looking ahead because this is not like a cheating kind of thing. Today is about rest. Oh, that sounds so amazing. It sounds so mystical and unknown and us tired, hardworking women. How in the world are we supposed to have rest when we're supposed to manage the house and keep up with our groceries and laundry and kids and by golly, are we supposed to shower ourselves and when do we eat and when do we have time to hang out with our friends, right? I hope that your life is a bit more balanced than that, but I do want to talk about rest and how it's a very important, important aspect and component of maintaining a healthy lifestyle. When we talk about routine, when we talk about habits, we get in the, um, habit, I use that word twice, maybe wrongfully, we get in the regular, I'm just going to say habit, we get in the habit of talking about what we do, the things that we do, the things we need to exercise and eating right and grocery shopping and meal planning and working and driving and, you know, fixing up, I'm just saying, all of it, all of it is busy and it takes energy and you might be tired. You might, you might not be tired in this current moment or if you're a morning devotional then you are probably tired like peeling off eye boogers from your eyes and that's totally cool, hey girl, hey. Um, but I want to talk about rest today and how vital that is for your health. I want to share a couple of, a, a couple of um, statistics or facts. Did you know that if you lack sleep, I'm talking like consistently get less than, I would say, eight, but I'll give, you, I'll give you some cushion. If you consistently get less than six hours a night of sleep, then you can cause brain damage. Did you know that? Okay, let me explain. There's a couple of things that go on when you have your brain growing, when you have your brain functioning, when, when you're trying to sharpen it, make sure it, this thing stays healthy. You, you can't, this is all you got. This is your brain, your head, your noggin, your wisdom, your peace, your content, your love. Like You need to make sure that your head stays healthy. But when you lack sleep consistently over a period of time, then I have done this research and it's mind boggling. Um, they have done these like temperature radar sonar things on brains and there are lesions on people's brains who have had like four hours of sleep a night for like years. Now that might be really extreme but I just think oh gosh I can't, I can't imagine losing short term memory. I can't imagine losing some capacity to think straight or have wisdom and discernment. I want to protect my mind, but on top of that, rest does so much more for you than just help help you having a clear mind. Rest and sleep is a priority if you really want to all around become your best. Um, I had made a commitment on day one to get eight hours of sleep a night. And I'll go ahead and tell you, for the past two nights, I have been up, up, up um, until maybe 11 or 12, which is not really late but late it is late for me it i used to stay up until like one or two in the morning working and hustling and those things were exciting to me because i'm very passionate about what i do but then i realized what's more important is maintaining a healthy very well-rounded balanced lifestyle which included eight hours of sleep a night so i had here oh i'm gonna go to sleep by 10 o'clock well i've not been honoring that for the past two nights and i've woken up very very tired I've woken up, um, I wouldn't say cranky, but very distracted. It's taken me a while to jump into work. It's get, taken me a while to figure out my responsibilities for the day. And it's funny because the moments in the days that I had gotten my eight hours of sleep, I felt clearer. I felt more prepared. I felt more on pace. And maybe that was little God's peace saying, good job, Laura. Like, way to go. Way to honor me with your rest. He wants us to rest. The focus of today... God wants you to get enough rest. The world wants you to burn the candle at both ends. I shared with you guys yesterday the idea of discipline and how I had gone on both ends of the spectrum and I have been a workaholic and I have also been somebody who's been lazy. And so I think there's a beautiful in between. Sometimes you're going to be more of a, you know, hustle mode. Sometimes you're going to be more on the vacation mode, but making sure that you're not committing the sin of workaholic 
or slothfulness. Those two things to the extreme are not honoring to God, but be anywhere within the spectrum as long as you surrender your day to Him each day. There's seasons of your life you're going to be busier. There's seasons of your life where you're going to get less sleep. Like in a couple of months when I have this baby, <laughs> I'm going to be getting less sleep. But let me tell you what God says about sleep and how beneficial it is for us. Now even God set the tone of getting rest. It's in Leviticus. You guys might be familiar with the creation story, but in Leviticus specifically, they talk about the Sabbath day. Leviticus 23.3. Who reads Leviticus? Can you even say Leviticus? Leviticus. For six, work, for six days, work may be done, but on the seventh day, there is a Sabbath of complete rest, a holy convocation. You shall not do any work. It is a Sabbath to the Lord in all your dwellings. So I think if God set the precedent... Ooh, my kid is yelling. If God set the precedent to get rest, when obviously he didn't need it, he created the whole entire world. But he was slowing down and getting rest and taking a chill pill. Um, maybe it's in our bedroom. No, I don't It's not in the bedroom? Yeah. Okay, well, do you want to say hi? Because I'm making a video right now. No. You don't? You upset? No, yes, you upset. Okay, well, maybe that's a funny video. It's a funny video. Let me finish this and we can make some funny videos, okay? Aww. Yeah, thank you for being patient. I watch that video. You can watch that video in a second. All right, look, Daddy's got a charger for you. Black charger. That's exciting. Okay, back to the video, really quick, guys. Dennis Swamberg, I don't know who that is, and I won't pretend to know, but he is somebody that they quoted in this book, so I trust that he's a worthy guy. He says, one reason so many Americans... Bye-bye, Bye-bye, Demon. Bye -bye, Demon. One reason so many American Christi so much American Christianity is a mile wide and an inch deep is that Christians are simply tired. Sometimes you need to kick back and rest for Jesus' sake. Now I am a pastor's wife. My husband is a pastor. My husband is a student pastor, but he's been a worship pastor, a teaching pastor, an administrative pastor, a guest pastor. Like he's been everything in in church world, ministry world. And I know that when you work in ministry, it's literally like a twenty four hour gig. It's not. It's not in pockets. When you say, "Oh, you're getting paid for you know whatever," it's you work constantly because your heart is in it and it's something you're passionate about. And I have seen with my two eyes that this. Uh, statistic is very true that 20% of the people do 80% of the work. Have you ever heard that? It's not just in church life, but it's within your coworkers' life, it's with your business life, it's probably within your life that 20% of people do 80% of the work. Put it in perspective, even 20% of the things that we do complete 80% of the tasks we need to achieve. So I think here about how important it is for us to rest, but a lot of us Christians are simply tired. We say yes to everything. We say yes that we're going to volunteer for this. Yes that we'll volunteer for this. Yes that we'll show up here. We feel bad for missing, you know, Aunt Susie Q's ex-nephew's third birthday. So we have to go to that birthday. It takes an entire Saturday. Um, we feel bad for not bringing 14 different, you know, casseroles to potluck lunch after church. So we stay up all day and on Saturday we do that. I mean, it just gets so busy, so busy. But God wants us to rest. And are, are there, is there like extra in your life that you're doing that doesn't really serve the ultimate purpose to one, bring glory to God or two, fulfill your purpose? Things, some things like we do are nice. Some things we do serve people. But if it's not good, okay, if it's good versus great, these are two different differentiators. If you're doing good work, if you're helping people, if you're serving people, if you're showing up, and if you're just being a nice, friendly person, those things are good. But is that a great use of your time? Because we all only have 24 hours in a day. And within those 24 hours, you need to be responsible enough to get your rest, to go to sleep, to sleep to rest, to relax. Can I say hey? This has become a family video. We're talking about getting enough rest, babe. We're going to share tips. They see your chest hair. Oh, God. Oh, God. Are we live? No, this is the recording. And I can't, I'm not going to edit that out. That's okay. Hi. Just... <laughs> this is my husband, Nick. I'm awkward. Hmm. 
This whole video has been awkward. It's okay because you're talking about the Bible. I'm talking about rest. Rest. And maybe we need more rest because my entire family is being delirious. I rested on accident. Today. Nick took a nap with Everett. He didn't mean to. It's a wonderful thing. What so here's a great practice. I'm going to share with you. I think there's like, um, babe, why are you, why are you all in here telling me this right now? I just wanted you to not forget about it. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's great timing. It was good There's to be a part eight... of your Bible study with your friends. Hi, friends. Hey, guys. I want to meet some of them and be friends with them, too. Hi. It's very nice. I'm going to finish up here real quick. All right. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. All right, guys. I'm Come good. to me, all you who are heavy laden and weary, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is light, and my burden is easy. Thank you, babe. That was... All right, guys, I think I'm out of the chaos, but it's my life is never not chaotic. Moving on. There's going to be eight different tips I share with you guys in the Bible study. One in particular that I really like as far as developing the routine of getting enough sleep in your life so you're rested and not cranky and not hangry and not distracted, which apparently my entire family today needs more rest, including myself, because we are very distracted and kind of weird. Um, but it says establish regular sleep patterns by getting up at the same time every day. Even if you don't fall asleep until very late, force yourself out of bed at the same time each morning. This practice within a few weeks will help you establish a more normal sleep routine. Anybody in here ever struggle with insomnia? I know I have at the beginning of this pregnancy and you're just like, oh, you roll around, you roll around, you can't go to sleep and it's so frustrating. Well, this tip here is saying no matter what, wake up at the same time every day so you develop that sleep pattern. Your body will start establishing when you need to be tired, making sure the melatonin in your body, the natural chemical that's going to be releasing the brain cells that says, you're sleepy, you're sleepy, go to sleep. Those things will start to kick in at the appropriate time. All this science chemical stuff. But dig into the scripture today. Please have grace with me with this ridiculous video and my ridiculous background that you could see the other half of my bedroom. All right. <laughs> It's day 12. I thought by now I wouldn't be so weird, but I totally am. Anyways, you guys have a great, great, great day.